Welcome to my presentation about the MBS MapView component. My name is Stephanie Juchmes and here are some facts about me. I was born in 1992 and study at the University of Bonn Computer Science. Last year in September I got my Bachelor of Science degree. Since January I work for MonkeyBread Software. MonkeyBread Software supply the MBS FileMaker plugin. And what is the MBS FileMaker plugin? The MBS FileMaker plugin includes not only the component map view, but also more than 5,900 functions that you can use in your solutions. What is map view? With map view, you can display maps in your solutions based on the Apple Maps data. You can use this data for Mac and iOS solutions. In comprehension to Google data, you would normally never reach the limit of free requests because the data query is dependent on the device and not on a solution key. What offers MapView to you? In this component we have 95 functions by now. On the right side you can see only a few of them. To embed cards in your solution you have two possibilities. On one hand, you can create a map with the help of a control, which means you place an area in your solution. You can call it, to example, as placeholder, because it acts like a placeholder. You now call the create with control function in the script. With this function, you create the map on the control. Here we have the parameters. At first, we set the window preference. If we went the most top window, we write zero, else we get it by the FileMaker own function. Then we set the control name as a string. In our example, it is placeholder. Optional, we can shift the map to the left or the right. We can also define a map view with an exact size. For this, we use the map view create with size function. Again, we specify our window reference and then the position of the upper left corner with X and Epsilon coordinates. Then follows the wide and the high of our map view. Then we come to the different map types. On the right side, you can see three examples of map types. Two examples of standard map view as we use it in our navigation systems. You see town names and street names, but not the terrain. Then we have the satellite view. You can see the terrain, but you don't see any streets or town names. But you can see the terrain. To example, it is a desert or a wood. Then we have the hybrid view. We can see the terrain and the street names. And everyone must decide which type fits as best for the solutions. You can set this map type with a function. And for example, you can change the map type with a button or so on. Then you can display an address in your map view. For example, you can create a field named address and then you can set this address to the parameters of the shown address function. This special address is shown and you can set an annotation. Here you see it as a pin. You can not only display a location, you can plan routes between two locations with the plan route function. You set the point in the parameters. You also set the type of the transportation in the parameters. You have two types of transport. You can calculate a route for a car or for a pedestrian. You set the transport type as a number. One is for car and two is for pedestrian. You see in the map two routes, next to the river is only a footpath. Because of this, you can see the dark blue route is the walking path and the light blue is the route by car. You can store the transport type in a field. In this case, you can switch the transport type to an example with a button. This is the plan route function on detail. We set a source address and a destination address. Then we have the parameter mod. That parameter decides in which way our route is displayed. The mode is composed of different points. 
if we enter one, we show the route in our map. Two, if we show an alternative routes. Four shows the start pin. Eight shows the destination pin. 16 is about, we have finished the root calculation and then we set the zoom level to the size that we see the whole route on the map. 32 returns us in JSON with information and description about the route. We will see it later. And 64 gives us the coordinates of the route description nodes. If we want to use more than one of the options, we add them. For example, it can look like this. We have here uh, the we want to show a route, we want to show the route, we want to show the start annotation and the end annotation, we want to zoom to the whole route, and then we want uh, JSON as a return. Optional, we can define the start and end identifier in the parameters. It can be useful, for example, if we want to delete these annotations later. And then we can choose a color of the start and of the end pen. We talk about the return as a JSON from the plan root function. We can read out the single root steps on this JSON and the JSON look like this. On the left side, we see one root node, we get the exact distance, the instruction, the distance text, that would now be called, we have the transport type, we remember one was a route for a car. The MBS plugin supplies a lot of JSON function to read out these informations. In addition, we get information about our source location in our destination. We got country, areas of interest, the time zone, for example, longitude and latitude, and so on. Here we list only the source location information, but the destination informations are similar. You have many ways to define annotations. You can define them by coordinates or by an address, but you can add other information like the color of the pin. You can choose it in the hexadecimal or by name. Or you can show an annotation with a customer defined picture, like you see the bee, the flowers, or the honeypot. That are all annotations. You define annotations with a picture in a JSON. You set the picture in the JSON based 64 decoded. And in this way, you can set a lot of information. We see it here. We set longitude and latitude or the address to define the location. Then we can define a radius that draws a circle around the annotation, a title and a subtitle that is shown in a little pop-up window, the color of the pin or an image with um, defined height and white, or you can define an identifier to refine the annotation for example, for change properties or for deleting. Uh, then we have many setting options for displaying informations and controls in our map. For example, buildings, point of interests, traffic, current location, scale, compass, zoom and rotation. Now I want to show you the first demo of the day. We show the map view, we can zoom in and zoom out. Then we can, for example, activate our current location. We see it here. We can turn it off. Then we zoom, for example, to Bonn. And we can activate buildings. You can see it here. It shows the buildings in grayscale. We can activate points of interest. We see here some shops or restaurants. Then we can display the traffic. So move it out. We can see we have the rush hour, the red parts there. You need a lot of time to drive through it because there's a lot of cars. And then we have the yes, this current location we see. Then with scale we can show. 
and now the campers the chows are the north and the zoom we can zoom in and out with these controls we can activate and deactivate the rotation so if I deactivate it I can turn around the trackpad and the map don't rotate but if I active it I can rotate the map we can render single map sections and create some snapshots with a JSON. You can define an overlays, annotation visibility, buildings, angel of view, etc. And then you can render the map. For example, you can display the position of your customer and then you can take it to your database as a picture. The screenshots are a picture of the map you actually see. All pictures you see in the presentations are screenshots. Then we can display overlays. To example, we can add a circle. We can set a circuit in meters around a coordinate. We can choose the color and the transparency of the overlay. But you can't only add a circle, but also polygons. We see it here. We set a single point of the map. And with them we create the polygon, we can set the color with the alpha canal RGB and the border second color and the identifier for the polygon. In this example we use the script trigger to set these points. The script trigger is a powerful tool in the map view. We can set a script trigger directly after we create a map. That script trigger calls a script that we defined. Each time we click on the map, this script is calling. With every click we get a JSON that we can analyze. This JSON I want to show you in the demo. We, I want to show you the script trigger and if I click on the map we add some annotations. For each click on the map we get a JSON. We see it here. We have a identifier and we have the mouse coordinates and the latitude and the longitude and we get the map ID so we can see on which map we click and here is a very interesting point we have the reason the reason is here clicked and if I select an annotation you can see the reason is annotation select and then I turn an annotation we have here an annotation move and these reasons we can take to a if and else conditions and then we can define a handling for each of the reasons. If we click on the map we add an annotation and if we turn it we set it to another point and if we have and three annotations we defined the polygon with the annotations at the edges. We have two very useful components for a map view solution. The first one is the current location geocoder component. With this component we can transform an address to coordinates or we have coordinates and get an address to this coordinates. Geocoder address string gives us a coordinate to an address. That means you can, to example, add the coordinates to an address to your own database. That is useful when we calculate a distance between two locations because we get it by coordinates. Then we have the, the reverse geocoder location. We calculate an address to a given coordinates that is very useful if we want to set an annotation by the script trigger we get the coordinates in JSON but we also want the address for our database and in this case we call the reverse geocoder location function. The second component is the core location component. In this component we get the coordinates of our current location 
and in this way we can define an annotation or calculate a route from our own current location to a destination and we get more interesting information about our current location like the altimeter or the occurrence in meters and so on. Now I want to show you a demo in which you can see what you can do with MapKit. The demo is a fictionarious example. We have less and less flowers that bees can visit to protect honey. Because of this, our wise bee Bella think about a database system that holds data of meadows with flowers. In this way, bees have an overview and can save time and power to find flower that is not occupied. And this is our wise bean Bella. We start on our lock screen and we choose a bee. Today we want to choose Hildegard. Then we can start our fly and come to the meadow and field layout. In this layout we see the single meadow records. We can switch between them. We have the name of the meadow for finding it in the map, the address, the town and the postal code. Additionally we have an entry for the owner of the meadow so that the bee can estimate whether there can be problems with the owner or not. Then we store the last visitor and the timestamp of our last visit. The bee should can prove whether the meadow meets its expectation. So we add a picture for each meadow. Additionally, we can create a screenshot of the map which shows the address. We click into this field and press enter. Then a script starts and creates the screenshot. Then we have this column of buttons. The first one loads a picture to our container. The second one would calculate the route between our current location and the meadow. The third one will take this meadow on our personal list of meadows we want to visit today. We can only set this meadow to our list if it's not reserved by another bee. The fourth button sets the last visitor entry to our name, fill the field last visit with the current timestamp and delete the meadow from our day list. The last button calculates the coordinates to this address. How it works we will see later. Then we want to visit the day list layout. We click on it. You can see the meadow that you have on the day list, but you can switch between your and free meadows with these buttons. This is realized with the FileMaker own search about the meadow IDs or the or the visitors. If you want to visit the record of the meadow in the meadow layout, you can click on the E next to the record. Now we come to the centerpiece of the solution, the navigation system. We have a map in the center of the layout and we see two annotations on the map. One is a honeypot that stands for the heave and one is the bee that shows our current position. We can calculate a route by enter a start and a destination point in the fields. That can be an address or a point of interest like a train station. With the button bar we can choose our transport type. We can choose a ride by car. So in this case the B use a taxi. We can choose a walking route. In this case the B can sit on a human who carries her or she can fly by her own. In this case we get the airline distance. But our B Hildegard is a bit lazy. Because of this she takes a taxi. 
we want to calculate a route between the City Hall of Cologne and the Cologne Cathedral. So we can enter these places in Start and Destination field. And then we can start the search. Then it shows the route and we see the route description and the distance in the fields. If we click on the speech bubbles it would be read out loud this text for bees that have a wet side. And with the other speech bubble we can stop it. This function is realized with the speech component from the MBS plugin. A voice in the operation system can be selected to match the language. Then we have the navigation to the he. That means we calculate a route between current position and a constant address. It's calculating our current position so it takes a bit longer and we see we have the calculation of the route between our bee and the honeypot. For this we get our current location, latitude and longitude with the core location component and then we use to determine the address to these coordinates with the functions from, from the geocoder component. Both components are included in the MBS FileMaker plugin. If we have an address we set start and destination to the fields and start the search. If we want to save a map snippet we can make a screenshot of this map. For that we have the map view screenshot function. It takes a photo of the card snippet we actually see in the map view and then we can open the map view that is safe on our desktop. So we have here the card snippet. In the function we can set the file name and the image type of the picture like PNG or JPEG. Then we can mark all meadows that we have stored in our database. In this case we run through the records and add for each record an annotation. We can click mark all meadows and we see we have a lot of meadows saved in our database in the area of Hamburg. We set the title and the subtitle of this annotation. Here we have the name of the annotation and here we have the address in the subtitle. We see it in this little pop-up next to the annotation. If we activate this button we can add records to our own database by clicking into the map. If we click on an annotation tree section in the map we add a record to the database. For example we can click here in this case we go to the layout meadows to complete the record, for example the name that is nature park and so on. It is in public ownership. And we can add a photo and create the card snippet. So we go back to the search. But we also mark the meadows on our day list. For example, we have two meadows on our day list. We can also show both and we can see we have some more meadows we can visit with Heldegard and we can click to example we want to visit one meadow more and take to our day list 
we can click on it and then we can take it to our day list. So on the day list we have this new entry. Then we come back to the search and we can mark our meadows and if we want we can find overlays like a polygon we can draw it to our own meadows you can see it here we can choose the fill color by the hexadecimal with alpha canal or by name and we have here a borderline that we can decide the fill color and the thickness. We can also add a circle with a circuit to our map. We click show circle and then we can calculate a circuit with kilometers around our current position. This is around our current position and you can see it here. Here we can define the fill color too. Then we have the functionality to remove annotations and remove overlays. And if we click on this button, we remove annotations like the bee and the honeypot. And to remove overlays, we remove all overlays on the card. Similar to these functions are map view remove annotation and map view remove overlay, which only remove specific annotations by the identifiers. With the last button, we update the current location so we can set the B. Now we want to look at the scripts. At first, how we create a map and set the script trigger. So we open the script workspace and go to display search. We create a map view onto a control. We name this control placeholder. We can see it here. Then we can see how to define annotation with the JSON. We have here the address and then the title. We have here the annotation heave and then we define the subtitle and so on. Then we add the image that is based 64 encoded. For the B annotation we need the current position so we call the script update current location and we see this script later. Then we set the script trigger. The script is every time calling if we click on the map and we have here the script name that is the script that call every time if we clicked on the map. With every click we get a JSON with information about the click and here we get the script parameters. It contains latitude and longitude the reason which tells us whether we hit an annotation or not, or we hit an annotation free area. And if we hit an annotation, we get the annotation identifier. And here we set these informations all in variables. In the script, we distinguish the handling of a clicked annotation and a click on an annotation free area. If we select an annotation, we check if we can find a record for this annotation. If we find one, we ask if we should visit this record and then go to the meadow layout. If we click on an annotation free area in the button add annotation by mouse is active, then we determine an address for the coordinates and save the information in a new record. We can see it here. If the button is active, we search the coordinates for the address and then 
save these information that we get in our new record. Now we look a bit closer to we determine the current location. For this we enter the script current location and we see we start updating the current location and get the latitude and longitude and we test if both are zero and if they are zero there is an error because even if we were in Greenbridge we wouldn't be able to find exactly the point zero zero by hand so it would always occur digits after the comma but if we have coordinates we stop the updating of the location and try to find the address to these coordinates with the reverse decoder location function by latitude and longitude and then we put them into a list and this is the return of our address and now Bella and I thank you for your attention I hope you enjoy it thank you for watching